I'm Warren Buffett. This is Charlie Munger. <clears throat> you may notice in the movie, incidentally, that Charlie is always the one that gets the girl. And he has one explanation for that, but I think mine is more accurate that, as you know, every mother in this country tells her daughter at an early age, if you're choosing between two very old and very rich guys, pick the ones that's older. <laughs> now, we just have two slides to uh, show you now. The first one is a preliminary uh, summary figures for the first quarter. And uh, you'll notice that insurance uh, underwriting these are after-tax figures by category, are, are down somewhat. Uh, uh, the basic underwriting at GEICO is actually improving, but we uh, had some important hailstorms in uh, Texas toward the end of the quarter. We've actually had some since the end of the quarter, too, so there were more cat losses in the first quarter than than uh, last year. Uh, and the railroad earnings are down significantly, and railroad car loadings throughout the industry, uh, all of the major railroads, uh, were down significantly in the first quarter and probably will continue to be down, almost certainly will continue to be down uh, the balance of the year. Uh, we have two companies which we added to the manufacturing service and retailing field precision cash parts and Duracell, but they were added during the quarter, so their full earnings aren't shown in the figures. Um, in the other category, we have, uh, I don't like to get too technical here, and you should read the 10K one, or 10, uh, 10Q when it comes out next, next uh, weekend. But uh, when we borrow money, in other currencies, and the only currency we've done that with is the euro, but we have a fair amount of money that we borrowed in euros, and the nature of accounting is that the change in value, the foreign exchange change in value each quarter is actually shown in, in interest expense. So if the euro goes up, we have a lot of extra interest expense or shown that way. It's, it's not a realized factor, but it's, it moves from quarter to quarter. And if it, the euro goes down, uh, it offsets interest expense. Uh, it's a technicality to some extent because we have lots of assets in Europe, <clears throat> and they're expressed in euros. When they go up, it does not go through the income account. It goes directly to other comprehensive income. So I just, that figure, which looks a little unusual, uh, that's the reason for it. And we always urge you to pay no attention to the figures below operating earnings. That uh, uh, they, uh, they will bounce around from quarter to quarter, and we make no attempt to manage earnings in any way uh, to have them be smoother. We could do that very easily, but it would be ridiculous. We make investment decisions <clears throat> solely on the basis of what we think the best investment decision is, <clears throat> not on the basis of how it will affect uh, earnings in any quarter or in any year. And in the first quarter, uh, we exchanged, uh, we completed a transaction that was begun over a year ago, <clears throat> whereby we exchanged our Procter & Gamble stock for cash and for Duracell. And that accounts for the large, largely accounts for the large capital gain in the quarter. So those are the figures uh, for the, uh, for the first quarter, and then for the uh, for the first quarter, and then uh, to illustrate uh, to illustrate what we're sort of all about here, uh, I put up a second slide, and I started this slide uh, in 1999. The reason being that at the end of 1998, 
we effected a large merger with General. And at that point, we sort of entered a different era. Uh, after 1998, merger with Gen Re, we had a little over a million five hundred and some thousand A equivalent shares out. And our shares up to that point, we'd increased the outstanding shares by more than 50% in the, in, over the 30, 30 some years preceding that point. Since that time, as I note here, we've only increased the number of shares over the next uh, uh, 17 years. We've only increased the uh, shares outstanding by 8.2%. So these figures represent a fairly unchanged share count since that point, whereas the share count had changed quite a bit before. And as you'll note, in terms of operations, I've told you that our goal uh, at Berkshire is to increase the normalized earnings, operating earnings every year. And I've said sometimes it'll, we hope, it'll only be, uh, it'll turn out to be only a little bit, and sometimes we can get some fairly decent jumps. But that's the goal. Now, earnings will not increase every year because there's such a thing as a business cycle, and in times of recession, we're going to earn less money, obviously, than in times uh, when things are much better overall. And on top of that, we're heavily in, in an insurance business, and earnings there can be quite uh, volatile because of, of uh, catastrophes. And this chart shows you what's happened uh, to the operating earnings uh, since that time, uh, again, pointing out that shares outstanding have gone up very little during that period. You'll notice in 2001, when we suffered significant insurance losses due to 9-11, we actually were in the red in terms of operating earnings. And you'll notice the figures are very irregular, but over time, by adding new subsidiaries, by further developing the businesses we have, by bolt-on acquisitions, by the reinvestment of retained earnings, uh, the earnings have moved up in a very irregular fashion quite substantially. I put in also the capital gains we've achieved through investments and derivatives, and they total some $32 billion after tax, close to $50 billion pre-tax. Those are not important in any given year. Those numbers can go all over the place. The main advantage from my standpoint in that $32 billion is it gives us money to buy other businesses. What we really want to focus on, what we hope is that, what we hope is that the bigger under operations five or 10 or 20 years from now grows substantially partly because we retain earnings from operations, partly because our operations improve in their, uh, in their own profitability, uh, partly because they make bold on acquisitions, partly because we have gains from securities which enable us to buy even more businesses. But we don't manage, as you know, we don't manage to try to get any given number from quarter to quarter. We never make a forecast on earnings. We don't give out earnings guidance. We think it's, it's silly. It, uh, uh, we do not have budgets at the parent company level. Uh, most of our subsidiaries have budgets, but they don't submit them, or they're not required to submit them uh, to headquarters. Uh, we just focus day after day, year after year, decade after decade, on trying to add earning power, sustainable and growing earning power to Berkshire. So that's a quick summary. Now we'll move on to the question. <laughs>